We wanted to be pop architects. It was such fun. See, I explored the potential for personality because the preceding era had been earnest and anonymous. We started to ransack popular imagery and architecture and reusing that as part of our vocabulary. To become part of postmodernism was never my ambition. My ambition was to crack the architectural code. It was all an exploration of people's tastes. We learned how to use abstraction. with pop when it came to actually doing work was you can design a building to look like a soup can, but the problem really comes when you put the windows in it, it kind of stops looking like a soup can. What is postmodernism in architecture? It was the style of the 1980s when architects recognised that something more than modernism was needed, that buildings should relate to history, to their surroundings, and above all, have a great sense of fun. The irreverence came from America, the classicism from Europe. What British architects did was weave those two elements together. I think postmodernism is about freedom of expression. It's about bringing an emotional dimension into architecture and it's about pleasure. When I went to the Architectural Association, which is the biggest school of architecture, but independent, and they were towards the Corbusian end of modernism. So it was all about brutalism. And we thought, we don't really want to be part of that anymore. We would go to the Royal College of Art. We would go to um, St. Martin's, which was just down the road, and there were Pop art. They were doing pop art. It was such fun. They were doing colour. They were doing popular imagery. They were uh, had prettier girlfriends. You know, everything about it seemed more attractive. So we wanted really to be pop architects. That was the mid sixties. What we did was we said, actually, you can play with architectural styles. You can do them as seriously or amusingly or. You can do colour or not. You can more or less do anything. I didn't agree, quite frankly, with um, so much of modernism that sought uh, anonymity and, and a sense of no place. The international style was um, ubiquitous. It was the same everywhere. So I uh, really wanted to uh, indulge in personality of the buildings, TVM, Charing Cross, and of course MI6, and I really enjoy the fact that it's in the Bond films. It's easily, immediately recognizable, and it's, it's a building with tremendous personality. It coincided with uh, people redesiring some identity in the city so that rather than live in an anonymous house in an anonymous street, there was a sort of new zeitgeist, which was, I live in that fabulous building, which is bright blue. Oh, you live there. You know, postmodernism proposed to bring in a 
complete smorgasbord of, of materials, uh, colour particularly being something that didn't occur in naturalish or worthy materials. So you find that you're using materials in a, a completely freer way. I became fascinated by um, older buildings, by context, um, by the sense of collective history that uh, buildings represented. The egg behind me, for example, was uh, an, ar an architectural motif uh, based upon a ball and cup, uh, which I saw all over Venice, uh, but it seemed to translate very well to breakfast television. I think most English architects learnt how to do architecture rather like the way you put on a hat when you went out of doors. It was politeness. I actually liked architecture, so I wanted to make it work for myself and the world I lived in. After the Second World War, I was told mythology is not permitted. Well, a mythi in Greek means a story. So telling stories was not permitted because it just got you into trouble. But you can't accept that. Architecture has a 9,000 year history and I don't think we can ignore it. I mean, it's too fabulous and uh, I've just modernized it. That's what I've done. Modernism has traditionally been associated with the office boom of the 1980s, yet it was no lackey to capitalism. It was modernism that had become the architecture of the establishment, and postmodernism was radical. Our three architects have shown that postmodernism is not about cliches, it's vibrant, it has a very English sense of humour and a real sense of place.